What is going on, my beautiful people? It is your boy Luciano, and we are back with another episode, episode three with Luciano Knows Best podcast. I have a very special guest. Um, I'm a person who just go ahead and say one of the hardest working women I personally know. That's why she's here, my homegirl Suset. And uh, we are about to get into this episode right now, so let's go. Are you sure you're ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm going to learn today. <laughs> Once again, I have Suzette in the building. How are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Yeah. Uh, by the way, congratulations on the podcast. I appreciate that. I was thinking about this. I was like, yo, with someone with the Instagram name, Luciano knows best. You best believe he better have a podcast. I'm telling you. It, so it, it was time. It was time. It took me a while, but I, I'm grateful. Like I said, I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. It's the missing piece, I feel like, that that I got in my life. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a blessing, and I'm excited for this to take off. Like I said, this is episode three. I had to have you on here because I've been following you. I've been listening to you on the radio and everything. So it's like, who's the most talented female I know? Let's start it off with her. Like, boom. So I'm grateful to have you on here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. So I'm going to go ahead and start it off with how was your Christmas and New Year? Since we're still in January vibes, I just want to know how was that? Uh, it was good. It was uh, my first Christmas and New Year's with a baby boy. Nice. Baby. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. He's going to be four months. Four going by months. so fast. It was good. But it was honestly like, you know, that time in between Christmas and New Year's, like we ended up getting sick. Oh, man. Yeah. And a lot it was, of people did. It was just awful because it's like I got sick and then I got my husband sick and then we got our baby boy sick. Ooh. And it's like you can't even take care of yourself anymore once you're sick and you have a baby. You know what exactly, I mean? Exactly. It's yeah. about the baby. Um, and it's just scary during these times. We didn't didn't get tested but it was like man we could have had covid and we didn't even know we you know we know. just yeah. quarantined yeah exactly yes. nothing I, else you can do so that's the thing uh, that's what i'm saying like i feel like once people get sick they don't even they're just so used to like covid 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 that they're like let's just quarantine let not even like go mm -hmm. try it out because i mean personally like when when i got covid like that was the first time and then i got sick uh, like a year later i was like i don't i was like i don't want to have it i was like i don't want to go to the hospital i was yeah. like i want to come home i was like i'll just die here if i do die <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so i'm saying but that does suck i know a lot of yeah. people like i said a lot of people being in the club scene a lot of people are like yo i can't come out i'm mm -hmm. sick i was mm -hmm. like thank you for being honest because yeah. people you could party parties are always going to be there you know what i mean so it's really good to like stay at home and and trust me i'm sure there were still people out and about that mm -hmm. had little sniffles and mm -hmm. coughs and mm -hmm. shit but they were probably terrified to cough in front of people but yeah that does suck but how like you said with christmas having officially a mother and having a baby boy how was christmas like purchasing gifts and everything it's different because not only you got to get your man a gift uh -huh. now you got a little baby boy well he's i mean he's three months so my even my husband was like what are we gonna get him and i'm like <laughs> yo he is not gonna remember not and gonna like remember. we have so grateful for this we have you know our entire family and friends spoiling the heck out of him oh, so i'm for like sure. nothing fits in his closet bro yeah. like we're not buying him anything no, and he's exactly. like that's awful and i'm like it's all right he won't he won't know this yeah. he won't ever see this i hope <laughs> i'm gonna make sure to send it to you when, you, <laughs> when you're 18 years old i'm gonna send it to you <laughs> now but the same thing with our family i mean now that we're older i mean i'm the youngest baby and i'm 30 mm -hmm. so i don't care what anybody says i'm gonna be the baby in the Forever. family no matter what i argue with my nieces and nephews i steal their fruit loops i ain't gonna lie like it is what it is but that's what we do now like we each do like a, a white santa or a secret santa and then we'll get whoever we pick mm -hmm. and then we just everything's for the nieces and nephews which i have three nieces three nephews three boys three girls mm -hmm. so we ball out for them so those kids You're from ready, Theo, i'm the only uncle too so like i give them the, the world, world. Yeah. <laughs> i got on bikes this year i was doing the most like it was it was dope it was a really good christmas so i enjoyed it and of course we take care of og mom and og pop so it that's was good, good. That's, a, that's a really good idea especially when you have such a big family you know to do the whole yeah. secret santa thing but that's awesome you say that like how you are with your nieces and nephews because mm -hmm. that was the same way i've got six sure. nieces and nephews and it just it really prepares you for like yeah. fatherhood and oh, motherhood sure. and it's like you're ready you don't yeah. think you you don't think you might be but you're ready i'm telling you i can i'm i know for a fact like i said i'm older now and everything like if i were to have a kid i mean i was ready a couple years ago but like if i were to have a kid now i'm just like i'd be ready like my nieces and nephews i had every type of kid uh -huh. in those six you know what i mean i got the one that nags the one that cries the one that doesn't say anything the one that doesn't want to eat anything yes yeah, all day and so i'm just and then of course i mean i'm not gonna throw out favorites or anything but there's always there's the always one i know you're gonna succeed <laughs> You don't, don't forget your Theo. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget your Theo. I'm gonna give you everything, but yeah, but it's a blessing. So I, I love it and everything. So um, another thing, being sick, you said during those times, did you still eat though the tamales and everything? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. You know, it was kind of hard after having a baby. It's like your mind immediately goes to 
man, I want to get my body to where it was. You know, I want to yeah. hit that. You know, I want to be 110 pounds like I was. Mm -hmm. But then I had to like sit back and be like, yo, I'm just going to enjoy, enjoy motherhood. It. And exactly. it's the holidays, so I'm not going <laughs> to deprive myself from all that good food. Like, yeah. no, yeah, I almost had to, like, check myself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And hell yeah, I ate, even when I was there. sick. Yeah, no, salute to mothers. I really mean that. Like, when men, men don't really truly understand unless you, I'm sure, have a kid and everything. But watching all three of my sisters that were all fit, mm -hmm. that were always working out and eating right and everything, and then they all have kids, you know, get a little bigger and everything. Nothing's wrong with it. But they all went back down, and I was like, yo, it's amazing how the body is. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. salute to all the mothers because... Us men, we don't really got to do much. You know? I'll just throw that out there. Man, <laughs> how I wish I was a guy sometimes. No, it's awesome that you even acknowledge that because a lot to. of guys refuse to. And yeah. I just grew so much respect for my husband when uh, we were, like, when I was about to deliver. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and I tell my friends this all the time. I'm like, yeah, I just, I never thought I would fall in love with him even more. Mm -hmm. But the doctor came in and she's like, all right, you know, we're going to check to see how dilated you are to see, yeah. you know, when you could have the baby. And she almost, like, without warning, just, like, TMI <laughs> goes in there. Yeah. And is like, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> and then she leaves and my husband walks over to me and he's like yo i appreciate everything you're doing oh, yeah, that's for love. our family no for like, sure i don't think i could do what you're doing and i yeah. was just like that's all i needed from yeah exactly. at that moment like that those words you're gonna forever remember that yeah it, helped. To him. it helped a lot I, i'm telling you i've seen you guys in the club scene together back in the, like back in the days and everything i was like i would literally person say i was like you guys are goals because you guys were mm. never like next to each other but you guys were like the life of the party with like 20 feet distance like i loved it for you guys you mm. know what i mean because a lot of relationships are crazy we're like where are you going oh you're going to the restroom with Tommy? oh you're going to the bar like no mm. you guys were dope your, your whole group in general like your group of friends and everything i know a couple of them and and just but like back to the relationship part like you could definitely definitely tell he's a good good guy mm. Yeah, for real. You can and, definitely tell that. You know, it's not perfect, but like I had some toxic relationships before him. Yeah. You know, and that's I learned from that. So mm -hmm. I, I remember coming into this relationship like we're not gonna, I'm not gonna do what I did in the past, yeah. and we're gonna do things differently. And 100%. we really became like the best of friends. And I think that's part of the reason why our relationship has been so 100%. great. Like I can't even cap on that. Like yeah. we, I love the relationship that we have. Yeah, that's what my parents saying. Like I said, I look up to my parents so much just because they've been together since they were 15. Now they're 65, 66. So like, oh, that's, awesome. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And for them to be friends, they were like, you were, we were friends. We were best friends. And mm -hmm. then, you know what I mean? And, that, and I always, people always ask my mom and dad, like, oh, how are you guys? Because I allow people to ask questions for my mom and dad, OG mom, OG pops. And uh, people always ask, how are you guys so still together? How are you so successful in everything like you guys do? And my dad always says it. He's like, we, be, we were best friends before. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my best friend. Still to this day, that's my best friend. Oh, and I was awesome. like, whoa, like it's so true. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and so that's really, really cool that you guys are best friends and you guys, you know, got it going. You know what I mean? And then now you guys have a baby. So mm -hmm. when's baby number two coming? Oh. <laughs> it's only been four months. You're like, <laughs> yo, chill. But it's like, honestly, something that we have <clears throat> to think about. It's like, do we want them to grow up together? Do we yeah. want to give that gap? Because like I kind of grew up like an only child. My sister is mm. 15 years older than me. Oh, and shit. my brother's 13 years older than me. So oh. I don't know that experience of like growing up with siblings. And yeah. then him as well. I think him and his brother, it's just them two. I think they're eight years apart. Mm. So I'm like, do we want to give a... Like, you guys want to do what we did? <laughs> yeah, because I'm fine with that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I love... Like I'm really close to my brother and my sister. For sure. Um, but now nah, I think we said we want them to grow up together. And, um, and we're going to start trying once he's one years old nice yeah. that's what my parents said with my three sisters so they were literally all a year apart and then four years later they had me so i was like i tell my sisters all the time like i'm the favorite because if i wasn't they wouldn't have tried like yeah, yeah. Man, that's what it is. get over it like i'm just that's being honest that's awesome though so 2022 it's a new year um i mean the world's crazy a mm -hmm. lot of people have been passing away and everything but it's just like what are your plans and goals and i know it's probably jumping straight to it but what are some of the biggest plans and goals you got for 2022 you don't got to share them all but what are some things that you're like yo i'm gonna make sure these happen well, the thing with me, it's like, obviously, like, I want to be an incredible mom. I just want to like, you know, I think that's the most important job, but I'm also a workaholic and for sure. I'm kind of weird. Like, I like to work. I like to put in yeah. mad hours. You know, some for people real. are like, what? Like, you're going to live your life working so much. I enjoy it. Yeah. I grew up watching my mom work so much that it's kind of become something that um, I don't dread whatsoever. So mm -hmm. I think I, I want to you know, try different things, learn more in the industry that I'm at because I'm in radio yes. and it's constantly involving. So I do have a couple of my own shows that I want to 
I don't know. I just want to improve. I want to get better. She said um, couple. A couple. Killing the games. <laughs> not one, not two. Just a couple more. That's nah, how I yeah. heart. You know, that's how I, I that's heart works. Saying. So I you can heart. do, you can be in multiple cities, you know, just yeah. from the same studio. So. And that's the cool part about it, too, because like I said, you've been in I heart. Um, I first time that I heard you um, personally was John Jay and Rich. Mm -hmm. And then I started following you from that. And then it just went from there, of course. And uh, so how many shows total do you have? I can't even tell you that many it's just it's it's interesting how it works it's like yeah i'm on the john j rich show and that's a syndicated show mm -hmm. so that's on I, I can't even tell you it's like maybe 20 some cities yeah and then i do my own show um and that gets sent out to like more cities <laughs> yeah. so it's just like you know that's, that's just awesome. kinda, yeah and and the sucky part about it is that with covid you know, we lost so many people in the company. Yeah. The company lost a lot of money. So it's like, imagine. You, they had to survive. So yeah. we had to pick up work from all over the place. So yeah. um, that's, it's not because like, you know, like I'm the best or whatever. But You're it's the best. Just, you can just say it. You're the best. <laughs> it is what it is. And that's the thing that sucks about COVID too. Because everybody, no matter what you did, um, unless you didn't work at all, it hit you. Mm -hmm. And it hit every company. And it's kind of sad because there's so many companies, like there's some favorite restaurants deeper than restaurants but it's like some places are never going to come back due to covid and it's just that even as us as a country it's like are we ever going to come back because so many people and so much money and all that stuff but it's really good to see like you know you are still there you know what i mean mm -hmm. and all that stuff and yeah, you're killing grateful. it and yeah exactly you got to be grateful 100 percent um how long have you been part of iheart radio it's gonna be 10 years this year 10 years what yeah. what are we doing for celebration <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that but is I, so awesome it hit me honestly like maybe three mm. weeks ago i was like yo i'm going into my 10th year and it doesn't even feel like it because i still feel like a rookie like yeah. i'm i'm still learning i'm still like you know looking up to to everyone before me that is just killing the game and has been killing it for more than 10 years yeah um but I don't know. I'm just like, dang, that's insane. So you've been a part of the radio for 10 years or longer? Uh, 10 years. So 10 years. Yeah. So, so it's I, always been I Heart Radio. It's always been I Heart Radio. Nice. So I started in radio um, in Tucson. And uh, it was, I want to say it was like my second year in college. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, this is, I was working at restaurants before. Yeah. And I was working at the mall. And I was like, yo, the radio's fun. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not dealing with customers and all this crap or whatever. Yeah. So I really enjoyed it. I spent a lot of my time there. Even when I wasn't supposed to be there, I was there yeah. doing fun stuff with everyone that was working. And I just, like, ended up moving up. And and just, like, they offered me to move to Phoenix. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. I was here doing my thing. I started doing afternoons on KISS FM first. Mm -hmm. And then um, Kyle, that's on the John J. Rich show, went on maternity leave. So they asked me to fill in for her. Yeah. So I was doing the morning show and I was doing the afternoon show for almost three months. Jeez. And I just no sleep whatsoever. Oh, I can imagine. But I was loving it. So yeah. after that, it was like, we want you to be part of the show. And it's like everything, I can honestly say, I work to be where I'm at. Oh, I for put sure. in mad hours and, and people need to understand that like you got to put in the hours you mm -hmm. got so i always tell people no matter what you do no matter what you want to do you have to put in the hours and a lot of people they hear that but mm -hmm. i don't think they feel it unless mm -hmm. you know yeah. so when i hear hours because i know me my lifestyle and everything that i got going on it's like i remember like go to sleep go to sleep but i was like nah like i'm not there where i want to be and i'm still at that stage where there's some people praising me like bro you're at where you're at like that's mm -hmm. awesome like i'm not where i want to be like this ain't nothing mm -hmm. like you're gonna love me in five years from now you yeah. know what i mean you're no, just that's awesome. for it. you know you got that ambition and it's it's fine that everyone has it and sometimes yeah. i'm like man i wish i wasn't about work all the time you know i wish i was like mm -hmm. you know trying to travel more and this yeah. and that so it's always a balanced i enjoy working but i also don't want to live my whole life working yeah and that's the thing too because for the first seven years me being in the club scene i didn't leave like i love to be there i love to be on the mic i was mm -hmm. like if i'm not there they're not gonna have fun like i literally had that in my <laughs> mind not that i was blowing my head out or anything but i was like they're not gonna have fun yeah or people are gonna get mad because i did leave one time for a vacation like where you at we're supposed to celebrate my birthday. So, yeah. like, I for They're seven years, I was literally, like, there. And then finally this year, or like, yeah, this year, last year and this year, I started to travel more. But when I did travel, it wasn't vacation. It was work. Oh. Vacation the first time. And then after that, I was like, oh, there's these people out here. Like, let me network. Let me grind. Let me go do content. It's let just me. in your nature, though. Yeah, it's in it. And, mm -hmm. and, and I love it. And like I said, like you said as well, like, you want to work and you love it, that mm -hmm. it's it's not even work. It's right. just, boom, it, it just comes easy and, and you just go from there. So that's awesome. Like I said, I have you on this episode, or I have you on the show just in general, just because I had so many people 
before like tell me about you and and then i started to watch you and then i started to see the way you grind like i wake up or maybe i'm just going to sleep from a club event, and then you just see your happy ass like <laughs> on the way to work da, da, da. it's like four three probably three in the morning you're on my way to work like i'm like yo how like how do you do that you know but it's awesome because you love it and you're yeah, right yeah, yeah and i think it has to do with our culture too dude the mexican culture it's like we work hard yeah heck no yeah, matter what dude, we do dude. we work hard i started I in construction for real i started in construction i'm grateful for it my dad did blocking he's done everything you know from being a football player professional you know weightlifting to uh uh what is it um what did he do? he did everything what did he do uh Kyle Practor to mm. to literally construction because he loved it yeah and then I'm grateful because I mean from eight years old all the way up until 21 I worked with them and I learned like and I'm grateful for that because that's construction is so hard I don't care what anybody mm -hmm. says great money and everything I was balling when I was 16 years old like I loved it you know yeah. but I'm like all right I don't want to do this forever like you <laughs> like, know I think that's, that's literally what shaped us because I would go yeah. to work with my mom too for when sure. I was like 10 years old and yeah. it was because she didn't really have a babysitter mm -hmm. so it was just like her and I <laughs> yeah. and she would take me with her and she uh, cleaned hotel rooms and I remember she would like make me clean and I'm like okay that's why I'm a yeah. clean freak like that's why I'm so crazy when there it comes it to cleaning she would take me to she worked at a tortilla factory and mm -hmm. I remember flipping tortillas with her like all Flip this and I'm like okay this is why I like to work <laughs> when you worked there how many did you eat? tortillas? <laughs> I couldn't have not one they wouldn't let you eat tortillas was, even on break? no she was she was strict she would Damn. be like, not these tortillas. We're not eating at work. I mean, you don't want anything to go no, missing. No, yeah, I'm not saying like that. Yeah, but I get you. I get you. I try to sneak one in, but she hey, didn't let me. Wrong. How is your relationship with your mom? It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. Um, nice. My mom is like everything to me. There it is. She, um, it, like, like I said, it was just her and I. And my parents got divorced. I think I was like in third grade. My mm -hmm. dad's been in and out of jail. And I've seen her go through it. Yeah. Like, seen her go through the worst. And I've try to be like her support system even from a young age definitely and she's not perfect i'm not perfect but i've just tried to be the most understanding daughter for sure and my goal like since i was a little girl because i saw her grind and everything she did was for me yeah my brother and my sister were like old already they were like living <laughs> their life they were with their significant others yeah um you know i saw everything that she did for me and everything she had to sacrifice so i just grew up wanting to take care of her 100%. and like not have to lift a finger ever again there it is and i'm blessed to um you know be able to do that now yeah like i you know her health wasn't the best and i was like this is it like you stop working now and i'm gonna take care of you and it was the hardest thing for her because it's like she older mexican woman and she's never, like yeah. that's what she's used to and she's mm -hmm. like Derka, you know yeah. you know she wants to hold <laughs> her own and i'm like don't feel bad. Mm -hmm. I want to take care of you. Like, this is what I worked hard for. Exactly. So, um, yeah, she's she's um, taking care of our baby boy now. So nice. That's, I'm so fortunate for that. So I get to go to work. And, you know, I know he's in good hands. He's with his abuelita. Feels so comfortable, yeah. And they're, like, obsessed with each other. That's all, that's where it is. Other. That's perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and with me as well, like, my mom and my dad are my life. Like, I really mean that. Um, I'm the baby of, like I said, the kids, and I don't have kids. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm still that 30-year-old. You know what I mean? I had my own house, and then my, my mom took uh, my nana and tata in, and then I started seeing them, you know, look tired, and I was like, nah, I got to come back. I'm over here just partying and shit. <laughs> I need to rent this house out, come back and help you guys out. You know, money-wise, nothing like that. It was just strictly just picking up my nana. I'm the young one. I was like, I got this. So, um, I told them, I was like, I'm going to stay here until my nana passes until my nana thought the pass and my thought the pass shortly like a year later and then they told me uh, us that my nana was gonna pass like a year six months to a year mm -hmm. my nana out here killing the game she yeah. stayed for another six six years yeah and i'm still i was still with my mom and dad's and my nana recently passed this year and everything and and salute to my mom and pops i mean i really look up to them for taking um my nana thought the end which you should mm -hmm. you know latinos we don't throw them in you know those no houses group homes. <laughs> no. we don't do that and then like i'm grateful for those six years extra because i probably you know um and it didn't stop me from getting relationships or anything like that or having kids but it was, i was super grateful because i got to spend six more years you know and now i'm starting like hey mom pops you know not enough to pass like i gotta get a house like mm -hmm. i gotta get out like, i'm 30 like i can't be living with you <laughs> tell a girl hey come over oh wait wait till my mom and dad go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> can't be having that so now i'm looking for a house and they're over here like Oh, you're looking for a house? I'm oh, like, yo, dude, chill. so Mexican. It's like, they like, don't want to let you They don't want to let me go. I'll, and they're my best friends. I'm telling you, I tell my mom and pops everything. I love them to death. And I was like, look, I'll find something because I know, like I said, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I'll find something around you guys' house. So mm -hmm. if you want to call, like, I'll be 10 minutes away or something. So, yeah, but they're, they're excited for me and everything. But they're just super grateful. And I'm grateful for them for the yeah. way they acted. And I know, 
like I said, I'm going to take care of them for the rest yeah. of their life. I'm like, we're going to fight for who gets my mom and dad when they get older. You know, I mean? love hearing that because a lot of people forget, like, we don't have them forever. No. You know what I mean? Like, I've, nah. I've talked to some people that are, like, fighting with their parents or haven't talked to their mom in, like, years. And, yeah. like, I know shit happens, but it's like, yo, life is so short. Very short. Like, I, I don't, I didn't have the best relationship with my dad growing up. Yeah. He wasn't really around. Um, and I saw some, like, things that I'm like, damn, I should be pretty messed up after seeing that. Exactly. But I forgive him. I'm not going to hold on to that, that stuff. And I, I want to have a relationship with him because one day, one of us is not going to be here. True. You know, it could be me. It could be him. And it's like, I want to be able to say that I gave it a shot. Exactly. I and respect enjoy that. that. And, you know, enjoy people. Yeah. Especially your family, your blood. That's what I'm saying. Oh. And I saw that with all my theas. I ain't trying to throw them on blast or anything, but <laughs> I saw that at the funeral. Like, yeah. all of a sudden, now they're crying. Oh, why aren't you guys crying? I was like, because I had my nana for the, like 30 years. Like, I'm happy. I'm blessed. You know, like, you guys didn't see her all the nights that she mm. was sad and hurt. And I was like, now you motherfuckers want to start crying at the mm -hmm. casket. It's mm -hmm. a little too late. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's sad to say. So, yeah, I'm glad that you look at it like that because there's not a lot of people. They're so theatrical. Like, they, they don't want yes. to do that shit but that i always tell people families everything i tell my sister all the time i was like if you guys want the house have the fucking house mm -hmm. like i'm not fighting for nothing i was like i don't care for the money i was like i'm gonna be balling no matter what i'm gonna work myself i was like i i need to make sure we have uh family like parties and everything because i didn't grow up with that like mm -hmm. i'll be honest with you like i didn't really go it was a family fight so it was like i didn't have the us i mean they're there don't get me wrong there's some that changed their ways and everything but i didn't get to grow up to like oh easter this the us or mm -hmm. and i said and i'm a party animal so i'm like shit like you know so <laughs> you want to be with yeah them. which with i'm always with my nina and nino um that uh they aren't blood but they've been i mean they baptized me so obviously they're blood to me and, and their family are, that's where i'm always at so it's it's it's, it's a crazy thing so that's definitely advice I tell people just, you know, as mad as you are, no matter what they did, you know, forgive them. And that's that's really cool because, like I said, you, you said your dad's in and out of jail and the fact that you forgive mm -hmm. him, you know, that's 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 big. Yeah. And I don't want to get super deep into whatever nah. happened, but yeah, that's no, really, fine. that's a big grown person. You know what I mean? That's that's really it, cool it to It took see a that. while. It took a while to, like, get there, but a lot of therapy. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. So back to the radio, what is some advice? Because I'm telling you, I had so many people reach out. Oh, my God, can you tell her I said hi? And I wish I had my phone to be That's like crazy. at <laughs> Suset. I mean, like at Rebecca. There's so many people who were like hella excited when I posted your picture. And um, so what is some advice you would give to somebody that's wanting to get into the radio? Oh, man. I mean, just just work your butt off. Like mm -hmm. literally anyone could do what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, the only difference, you know, that I saw from me and other coworkers is that I didn't stop learning. And, nice. you know, so many people in this industry get to a point where they're like, I know it all. Like, don't tell me how to do this. Yeah. And that's just such a bad attitude to have. Big time. It's constantly evolving and you have to get with the times or you're going to be left behind. 100%. It is what it is. Everything changes. Like yeah. from the board to the system that we're using to the microphones. It's like, don't. Don't get mad because things are changing. Yeah, nobody likes change, but it's yeah. you know you'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is like once you have your foot in the door, it happens with a lot of people in radio. Their head get they get really big. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? It's like ooh, I'm on the radio. Like yeah, <laughs> and you start treating people like like crap. And I've seen it happen. You know where it's like I my mom always told me you treat the custodian the same way that you would treat the CEO all day. You have Huge. to respect absolutely everyone. 100%. And I've always been like that. I've always yeah. been nice to everyone. Even if they were like assholes to me, I'd be like, I'm not going to be like them. I'm going to continue being who I am and I'm going to continue being nice to you. I respect that. So, yeah, if you get in, in the game, just like always check yourself. For sure. Always. And I learned that, I'm, I'm going to be the realist. I've always been humble, but I learned that four years deep into the club scene because, I mean, I was 22 years old. I was skinny, six-pack. <laughs> All the Thea's wanted me at Q Lounge. I was loving it. All the Thea's. I know, for real. And then I met a radio personality. I'll never say his name, but I, I, I met a radio personality that I grew up listening to, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm meeting you. Like, me and you are going to work together. He's like, he pretty much did what you do to your little cousin, like, turn off the fucking controller. Like, <laughs> I'm over here, like, trying Ouch. to get on the mic. Yeah, and he was a DJ, so he had control to shut uh. shit down and, like, I was like that, and they would like, well, what the fuck's wrong with my mic? I was like, maybe I need new batteries. My dumb ass look at <laughs> But I was like, you know, and then I later found out, okay, he did it again. He did it. I was like, man, fuck this guy. <laughs> I ain't gonna work with you. Mm -hmm. And it felt great to surpass him. Mm -hmm. And now he hitting me up for gigs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, remember that time my mic wouldn't work? That situation changed my life. Like that literally like got me out of the, I'm the shit. Mm -hmm. I can get any girl I mm -hmm. want. And I'm grateful. And you also grow up too. I always tell people, you yeah. grow up, you get older. Comes with an age. You know what I mean? Um, for me to get rid of the mic. I mean, I'm still on the microphone here and there. I'll host like festivals or like concerts and I'm trying to get into a more and then like club events outside of the state. But now I'm like, I'm 30. 
I'm not saying it's bad to be on the mic at 30 years old or anything, but it's like I'd rather have a young buck that's 21, 22, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that the girls can love like they used to love Luciano when he was 21. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it, it brings more women in. Like yeah. 21 year old, who the fuck are you? Like, you old ass. I, <laughs> Mike Thea told me about you. <laughs> no, I respect that so much about you because there's so many people out here that are just trying to pretend like they're young. And it's like, you got to. I just own it, Let man. it go. <laughs> stop, stop. And yeah. I, I've said this. I'm excited to like hit my 30s. I'm, yeah. I'm going to turn 29 this yeah. month. Okay. And nice. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to be 30. You know, That's I hear great best. things about being 30. It's like you got it figured out now. You know, in your 20s, you're kind of a mess. Your brain is everywhere. Yeah. And it's just like age is a beautiful thing. We have it to is. embrace it more instead of like, oh, no, I'm not going to say how old I am. Oh my God, I'm like, 30. Come on. I said that shit out loud. I almost Good. got the big 30 balloons and 3 zero and shit. Hell no, yeah. I'm grateful to be 30. Like I said, I lived the 20s. Like, I don't think I wouldn't even trade it for a celebrity life of 20 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. living in the mansions and Lamborghinis. Like, I literally love my 20s and I don't regret nothing. And I had the time of my life. I learned so much. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like once you hit 30, it's just like, all right, like you're 20, but with money, you're 20 with uh, knowledge, you, you, you know, and it, it just blows up from there. Because I'll be the realest to say this, like I said, and in, in, since I've been in the club scene, because that's been one of my main jobs, once I hit 30, I was like, yo, 30 is going to be 21. Like, I'm going to fucking, yeah. boom, I'm going to go. And, and it's been doing that for me. And it, it's been, it's a blessing. And I'm excited because, you know, you're more mature and, you, and you're just taking more serious. Yeah. And it's not, oh, I'm 30, so take me more serious. It's just more the sense of, you start hanging out with people that are, you know, that's what I've been doing lately. I've been hanging out with ballers. I've been hanging out, and it's deeper than ballers. It's it's hustlers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people that got their shit together, restaurant owners, CEOs, the the whole nine yards. And and that's why I'm like, yo, feel good. Hey, you, you guys are good. 25. Wait till you're 30. You're gonna really fucking yes. love it. So that's dope. Yeah. When's your, when's your birthday? Uh, the 18th. 18th. We right there. Right there. Oh shit. I right know. There. It's crazy. I'm not mad at that. What's your plans for your birthday? Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm going to sell her a table right now. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I want to do speakeasies, just like kind of discover new places. Those are where it's at. Yeah, it's like it's like the thing right now. So It is. But my husband, he's a health inspector, so he's been kind of discovering all kinds of new places. Mm. And he's been like writing them down. He's like, all right, once baby's here, we're going to go here, here, here. So we have this whole list nice. of like places that we might visit. Just yeah. try to take it easy. Spe I can't be that hungover. I got a baby now. I know. I feel you on that one. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. I'm 29, like that hangover lasts for days now. It does. Dude. Does. Yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, it just matters what you drink. So I've been through every type of alcohol, and I'm just like, I can't drink that. I'm sorry. Like, it, I already know. What, how do you the, what is it now, though? Like, what's the safe drink? Me personally, I, I just been going more for Don Julio 70. Um, I try to stay far away from champagne, even though like they love to give you champagne to pop. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Don Julio 70 with soda water. I know that sounds fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know so oh man soda water i don't want to sound bougie or anything but you know when you got fine tequila that's i think the oh that's the best go. that's yeah. the best and unfortunately it's like the most expensive yeah but once you have a taste of the fine tequila yeah it's like you can't go back to that cheap tequila I'm, ever no you can't i don't i don't remember the last time i had an amf i don't remember the last time i had a, <laughs> anything like and when it comes to shots like oh patron i'm like Ugh, no negative Ugh, it was like, get away. And, and then you're right like bougie like people oh you want 42 oh you got money it's not like that it's just i know i'm gonna be fine tomorrow morning mm -hmm. like 42 the new 42 it's a real thing the mezcal is like the class of and all that oh my god like, the mezcal I'm telling you. Sounds good. Sentico. I'll be right there. Why didn't we have that right Hey, now? We, I know, right? We got water. Let me find out. Wow. I'm officially <laughs> bringing a bottle every episode. No. <laughs> she said water. <laughs> Gross. I appreciate this. Hey, for real, for real. So, clothing brand. I know you got a clothing brand. Mm -hmm. um, what is it called? What does it stand for? Let the people know. Um, it's called Be Raw. Be Raw. Uh, clothing.com is the website. Mm -hmm. I just like, you know, so many people have clothing brands but i remember when i wanted to start this i wanted there to be a meaning behind it yeah and my main thing is i think one of the reasons why um you know i have i have some people that rock with me really hard and i think it's because i've tried to stay authentic my entire career definitely and one thing that i see a lot you know especially with the younger generation you know, I got nieces, I got nephews that are in high school, mm -hmm. is the influence that social media has on you. True. You know what I mean? And it's like, damn, True. like sometimes, you know, I see my niece and I, I see her try to do all these things and I'm like, mama, you're perfect how you are. Yeah. You know, I have to like, I have to tell her that because I don't know if anyone else is. And if she's seen all this stuff and she feels and thinks that she should be something else. Mm -hmm. So when I um, thought of the whole concept of Be Raw, it was just literally something to encourage 
especially the younger generation, just anyone in general, to be to be real, to be your raw self, to be you nice. how you are. Exactly. And we all like I struggle with this too. Like there was a point where I was like, yeah, I want to get my teeth fixed. Like I want to give an ears. I want to do this. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I had to check myself like. Okay, why am I feeling like this? You yeah. know, and I'm like going on Instagram, and I'm seeing everyone's pearly whites, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if those are actually your teeth. Exactly. And then I started listening to Crooked Smile by J Cole, and I'm like, hey, oh man, like J Cole. I just got to check myself and be like, I'm fine. You know what I mean? This I is me. That. I don't want to change it. This, is, if my teeth are all messed up, it's probably from experience. It's part of my life. It's yeah. part of who I am. So that's what I want. Be raw to like, just put out there. It's just be you. Be it's you. all right and a lot of that has to do with mental health and just 100%. working internally and knowing what's making you happy and knowing what's not making you happy and i discovered all that with therapy and mm. working on my mental health which is not a very common thing with the mexican culture it's not something that we really talked about no. you know <laughs> i remember teaching my mom about that yeah like she was going through it and i was like something's not right here and it was like i told her Ma, have you thought about therapy? And mm -hmm. she was like, offended. She looked at me oh, like, shit. <laughs> ¿Qué quieres decir con eso? You think I'm crazy? Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, no, ma, like, I'm going to therapy. Yeah. And we've been through a lot of stuff that's affecting us now. Like, 100%. You know, she's been through it worse. Like, oh, I don't even know. Like, I just want to sit down with her and have her tell her whole story because it's just crazy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, part of the proceeds from my clothing line go to uh, mental health facilities. Sheesh. And I and one Love of the things that, that. that. I want to work on this year, it's, you know, therapy is not something easy that, to find. Mm -hmm. like you got to go through hoops to yeah. find a therapist and to even just, like, pay for a therapist is so damn expensive. So I want to kind of do something where it makes it more, you know, accessible to to. Anyone, Anyone, even if you don't yeah. have that much money, you should True. be able to get therapy. Exactly. And there's programs I know that like that aren't shine. They don't shine the light on those because they want people to pay. Exactly. And that's the sad part. It's awful. Um, me personally, I dated therapists. Oh, fucking crazy. Not her crazy. Not, you're not crazy. <laughs> but I dated one and 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 she told me the, the, what I loved the most about her. She was like, I'm not your therapist, so I'm not going to treat you like a, a patient. patient. But she was like, there's some shit. <laughs> that you need to fucking go <laughs> You gotta work on You honey. need to work on like, <laughs> And then there's a whiteboard With all the shit that I need to work on <laughs> all, Sit down You sit are my down. patient <laughs> I know right But no and, and I was Like your mom I was like no, nah, I'm not fucking crazy Like oh I might be a little toxic I'm a Scorpio But like I didn't want to go oh, Scorpios and then, I'm telling you My mom's leave. a Scorpio too so by she the way. Yeah. Up, Me and your mom here, We're gonna take shots So I'm gonna bring you a bottle of tequila <laughs> No and uh And then I did go to one I, I did uh, Didn't go to anything Where she worked at Because you know She was like no This is the guidelines You can't go to any place I work and so we found one and I went just to like clear everything and I was like it feels really good like, mm -hmm. it really does and you learn a lot about yourself um, and you, it kind of opens your eyes it's deeper than just talking to somebody that you know mm -hmm. because I don't care what anybody says if you're going through problems or anything like people that you love you're either going to get a person that's like gonna just oh yeah 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 like you're good you're perfect or you're gonna get a person that's like well you are fucking up in this this and this when you might not be mm -hmm. so when you get a complete stranger you kind of tell them your life da, da 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 they'll give you a really good answer so i definitely hey salute to that i'm gonna be shouting you out on your clothing brand and i hope everything works and Thank you. anything you need from me for that because that's huge like there's so many people that we i've had personally three or four friends take their life in the last two to three years mm, i'm sorry because, yeah because they're mental and i was like what, what like i you would have never known mm -hmm. i really I mean that i was like yo, you look hella happy in the club like you look you know what i mean you looked um you look like you were having a good time you post everything but we really don't know exactly you know what i mean i remember when i was going through it i was hiding it very well yeah. as well and it was when my career kind of took off and it was like going really well for me and then i just felt like be the happiest <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. like it just hit me yeah and i was sad i was so sad and i was trying to pinpoint exactly what it was I was like looking at my life and I'm like, all right, got my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. It was my boyfriend at the time. I got my friends, like my family's here. I got my health, yeah. I got a good job. I'm like, why am I so damn sad? And I just damn. could not, I even went to the doctor that I had like a thyroid disorder or something. <laughs> I was like, something's wrong with me. Something's like wrong with me. I have no out. motivation. I can't like think straight. And the doctor just looked at me and was like, hold on. And then he brought in a, a clinical therapist and yeah. she was like, went through everything with me and I left feeling better. And she's 100%. like, I want to see you again. So that's how that all started. It wasn't like anyone was like, you need to go to therapy. And yeah. this is back in 2016. So I feel like we weren't really talking about mental health back then. No, nah, not at all. But yeah, it like I was pretending like everything was fine, you know, with my friends and family. And then when I hit them with the, yeah, I'm going to therapy. 
they were like, what? What? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, but it what was... <laughs> I was glad to be able to introduce that to them. Yeah. You know, and be like, guys, it's great. It's great, yeah. It's not a bad thing whatsoever. Exactly. And, it, and a lot of people are shy, and that's one thing, like... I've learned to not be, you know what I mean? Like, don't feel like... The moment I got out of the, oh, shit, I care what people think about me, mm-hmm. I I became that superstar in my eyes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. the greatest thing. And, and even my own family has, like, noticed that they're like, yo, you got away from a group of friends that you were trying to impress that did, didn't give two fucks about you, and now you're like, your friends are us. I mean, I'm saying I don't have other friends. I love mm-hmm. my friends to death and everything, but I don't know what they're plotting. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know yeah. if they really, truly love me or if they really need just to get in the line for free. You know what I mean? The clubs and shit. So, like, your family obviously is going to fucking love you. So, it's like no to really, like, break that down to be like, yeah, OG mom, OG pups are my best friends. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Mm-hmm. And for them to, like, see me happier and see everything, they're like, yo, like, that's really good, you know, because we saw the sadness in you and you would fight it. And I was like, damn, y'all saw that? Like, you didn't say anything? We didn't say anything a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, nah, you gotta, they have to let you figure it out on your own. And yeah. that's I think that's one big thing that you overcome in your 20s is not giving a fuck what anybody thinks. 100%. And it's hard. It's hard at first. Very when hard. you're in it, it's hard. But yeah. once you actually get to that point where it's like, damn, I don't care. You really find true happiness. True story. I mean, I did like, I started, I had my, like I said, my hands in everything. And when I was doing content skits, which we're going to talk about right now, because you, you, Paco, <laughs> love Paco. Um, I, I remember putting on a wig and a dress and they were like, I never got so many DMs. Of, oh, he's gay. He's gay. He's gay. Shout out to the gay community. I got cousins that are gay. Um, you know, salute to you guys and everything. I'm not against you guys. I give, mm-hmm. to be honest, gay people are the funnest people to fucking party with. And like, I'm like, I know I'm not gay. I'm, I'm comfortable with my sexuality. Mm-hmm. But so many people were like, he's fucking gay. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, because I wore a wig and I made your girl laugh or what? You mad? Yeah. Like, don't, <laughs> make me, don't make me wear the wig to your, your girl's house. Like, yeah. I, really, <laughs> I was literally saying that shit. And then that's where it links into like my brand. Who hurt you? It's like, why are you fucking bothered about what yeah. I do? Yeah, yeah. and that's where that shit blew up but no that's really good and I always tell people all the time like yo you do not gotta act hard and it all goes back to social media I think mm-hmm. once you master social media where it's like don't like compare your life to other people's eyes because you don't know what they've been blessed with there's some people that live in Beverly Hills and got the Lambos and everything that their parents gave that to them which it's nothing wrong with it but at the end of the day I know I'm grateful that my mom and dad didn't give me shit mm-hmm. they gave me a J30 Infinity which aka the Roach you know what I mean a little <laughs> ugly ass when I was young but I was blessed and I, and I went from there and I blew up as far as you know working my ass out mm-hmm. like, and I'm grateful for that lifestyle because I did, I'm probably a snobby ass kid that mom dad was, work for I need 5,000 I need another yeah. 10 you know what I mean so I'm yeah. so glad you said that because this is an unpopular opinion, yeah. but everyone's like, oh, like, have you started a college a college, college fund for your son? And I'm like, no, nah, like, I don't have that. four months. Yeah, and no, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> well, here's the thing with me. It's like, I'm like, you know, I talk to this stuff with my with my husband, and I'm like, yeah. uh, this sounds like, like I'm an asshole, but I don't want to start a college fund for our son. Like, I kind of want him to work for it. And mm-hmm. he's like... I kind of want him to work for it, too. And I'm yeah. like, it's not that I want him to struggle or anything, but I also want him to know what struggle is. Exactly. And I don't, I'm like, I feel like a bad parent in a way, but I'm like, I didn't, like, I worked hard for everything that I have, and I appreciate it so much, and I don't think I would have that appreciation if I didn't work hard for it. And I, I want that. him to have that. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but <laughs> no, <laughs> he's not and, getting that. And that's the thing, though, like, and that's the thing, because, like I said, I'm grateful, and I'll never... Stop thanking my parents for that because I feel like, like I said, if I just got everything, I like, you know, fucking, what did they call it? Uh, spoon fed or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I would be who I am today. And I don't think I would have the ambitious ambition to hustle, to yeah, work, to yeah, yeah. know, like when the pandemic hit, like the clubs were gone. That was literally like 85% oh, yeah. of my income. And I was like, shit, I only, That's scary. I was only selling two, three shirts a day or, or like a week. I was like, I need to hustle. And like it, I made the most money during that pandemic. And it's, I, super grateful and thankful for my parents also the people that bought and purchased during the pandemic Mm -hmm. but it made me hustle it made me grind and uh, oh yeah I'm grateful for that and I don't think that like I said there's nothing wrong with what you're gonna do with your son or any of your kids because it is true like why 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 say for him like yeah. <laughs> what if he's a fuck up nah, just <laughs> nah, and just he like, has all this money and I I'm know, like, right? Wait, what, what if he wins a scratcher and he's good like <laughs> you saved all that money you could have spent it no but i really mean that like no that's really good that you're gonna make them hustle i think i'm gonna do the same thing when i have kids mm-hmm. i never thought about that mm-hmm. but i'm we ne- i've never even talked about that situation or heard anybody talk about that situation usually people are like yeah yeah, yeah i'm gonna save but in reality, I don't even really think I've, like, yeah, I, I don't think I've even told or talked about this with like everyone, anyone else but yeah. my husband. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, no, I respect that. We'll I think that's, I mean, like I said, you're going to take care of your son. And I'm sure you're going to be a good mother. He's going to be a good father and he's going to know what to do. Trust me. Like, yeah. he's, he's going we'll to guide him in do. the right direction. And I think hopefully. that's the biggest thing. So that's awesome. 
back to the radio real quick. Who are some fa- like some famous people or just celebrities that you've personally met that you cherish? Like you learned something from them. Hmm. I would say that I've met. I've met Charlemagne the God. Nice. And I, I've really liked him from the beginning. Like I was kind of listening to their morning show when they first started. Yeah. And uh, just the way that he's unfiltered. Nice. I appreciate that. Like in a way where it's like sometimes it's like a little much, mm-hmm. but he, that's who he is, you who know, and is. he's unapologetically himself. And that's something that I, you know, I highly respect and I try to promote, Definitely. you know, within myself. So, um, yeah, I think he's, I think he's one of, as far as radio, like he, I really think he embodies radio very well. Definitely. Mm. What is something that he said or like, whether he said it to you or he said on, on radio that you were like, whoa. Well, there, I mean, there's so many, so many things. Cause it's like, I can oh, imagine. But yeah. Like I'm going to make you pick one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the thing with some old school radio heads is that they try to make their life seem so perfect. Like they've got no dirt on them or whatever. Yeah. And he puts all his dirt out there. Like, 100%. you know, he straight up says like, yeah, I cheated on my girl years ago and I've <laughs> yeah. learned and I'm, you know, that's when I was a boy. Now I'm a man and this and that. I respect that. I think he was like one of the first radio hosts that I heard saying stuff like that, where it's like, Ooh, dang, he's straight up, you know, is yeah. owning it. And 100%. you have to, you have to, you have to, I, I grew so much more respect towards him when I heard him talk like that. Yeah. And that's something that I, I mean, I never heard him say that and I'm sure he said it, but I, I don't know where I learned that from, but mm-hmm. I learned that from somewhere. Cause I, I don't know, maybe it's just being told so many times when I do meet somebody new that it's Arizona small, mm-hmm. especially Phoenix. There's only so many clubs you can go to that you're gonna see Luciano. So I've talked to, you know, many women in my life. I'm not gonna lie, I was crazy from 21 to 28. You 29. lived your life. <laughs> no, I lived it, you I, lived I, I did. Life. And, and I find myself every time that I meet somebody that I'm interested in, oh, you're Luciano, I heard about you. And I'm like, oh, uh, fuck, here we fucking go. I was like, what, <laughs> what, what'd you hear? You know, and then it goes from there. And and then I started to realize, just like, why lie? Just own up to it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like, you're going to be interested in me or not. Like, yeah, I was a whore. Like, yeah, I might have talked to your friend. Mm-hmm. I might have talked to that friend, too. It's like, yo, I'm a new person now. I grew up. I matured. I realized, and, and I'm saying this as a, as a grown-ass man, uh, having hoes, having multiple women de- doesn't do anything for you. Mm-hmm. Your mind's all over the place. I got to remember, did I text her good morning? Did oh, I tell God, her? Would you be- Horrible. <laughs> Funny story, I text, when I first got an iPhone, I text 20 girls, and I didn't know it was a, I thought you, you know Android, I don't know if you remember this, but yeah. it like separates the messages. Yes. When you put it, well, my dumbass put it in a group message. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful, I hope you have a wonderful day, I can't wait to see you tonight. 20 different girls. <gasps> Luciano. Put it on my mom and dad. I felt like, a, I left that group message. <laughs> I left like the moment I realized, they were like, who's this? Who you talking to? Luciano, what? And I was like, Fuck. That's when I knew the life wasn't for me. No, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you grow out of that and you, you realize, learn. yeah, you, you, you definitely learn and, and you go from there. And, and, and I respect anybody that, that literally says it. And I, I say that a lot. I talk about it a lot because that's one of the main questions that I get asked every day when I meet a new person or when somebody follows me. Yeah. Oh, you're handsome. Like, oh, but I heard about you. I mean, you shouldn't be ashamed of it whatsoever because it's like every single, you know, relationship that you had has yeah. has molded you to be who you are today and, and it's gonna help you for your future relationship all day like i love it this is this is weird but i love knowing everything about my husband's like past relationships okay. details and everything i respect that and everyone's like don't you get jealous like don't you hate hearing about him and some other girl i'm like nah that was before me yeah. like it's fascinating I'm to here me. now motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> i won yeah, i won yeah exactly <laughs> no he'll be like I'll be like, wait, that was like the 14th girl or the 15th girl. <laughs> and I, like, it's great. Like he got to live his life, enjoy, mess around. And I'm glad that he had that. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's like getting it out of the system. Exactly. Like, yeah. It was just like. Because I got friends great. that nothing against them. They, they got married young. And I'm like, I pray that you guys last forever like my mom and dad did. Mm-hmm. But I'm like 22 years old, married. <laughs> I'll see you at 32 when you're trying to hit me up to go to the clubs and shit. Your mind wanders, and I'm gonna man. Be, I'm telling you, I'm going to be long out of this shit. I'm going to be <laughs> hella retired. I might own the fucking club, but you could go. But I'm grateful that I got that out the way because I know I can't wait to Netflix and chill with the girl of my dreams. I can't mm-hmm. wait to travel. I can't wait to... Like, people ask me all the time, like, oh, you haven't traveled to this country or this? I'm like, I kind of want to do that with the girl of my dreams. I don't want to... And there's nothing wrong with traveling when people do your thing. Like, I have, I've traveled with friends in Mexico and shit like that, but I'm talking about the bigger, like, yeah. Paris. I don't want to go to the Eiffel Tower with another fucking girl and then go with this girl, go that way. I'm like, I'd yeah. rather spend it with the love of my life and, and that's just my thoughts on the situation. But 
No, I'm, I'm very excited because I know whoever I do end up with, wherever she's at in this world, I hope she's not being a hoe. Um, <laughs> hey, let her hey. get out of her system, <laughs> man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let her have her fun. I, I it know. Was before you. I know, right? Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited because I know I always said this. Whoever I do have a kid with, uh, that's going to be the mother. And that's going to be forever the wife. That's that's just what I want. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fucking have a baby mama. And there's, and there's nothing wrong with it, you know? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that have two to three baby mamas. Or and two it to works. Three, yeah. You know, it works for them and shit. But me personally, I want to try to be as authentic as fucking possible. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I'm excited for that. When did you get married? I got married last year. No, it's going to be two years. Two years. In July. Two years. So then, I would. Say that's your first kid, right? Yeah. So I would kid. say that's authentic as fuck because you got married. Yeah. Not a lot of people that get engaged, which is nothing wrong with that. People don't judge me. Don't get beat up. <laughs> fuck. Go it's talk, the talk traditional. Like, very traditional, and that's what I want because I'm already yeah. there. I'm 30. Like, why am I gonna fuck up now? Like, it's another. That's another thing with our culture too. It's like I. At least my mom was like, "Mijita, make sure you get married first, and then you have yes. kids, and this and that." Yes. So it's that. It's those traditions that. I mean, at least for me, I'm a very traditional type of person. I so that. I wanted to keep that. I wanted to wear the white dress. You know, when I got yeah. married and everything but there are some traditions that i'm like not about so i, yeah. I picked and, cho and you know i chose which ones how I was getting married it was awesome the was moment you're like i'm about to walk down the aisle what was that feeling let's hear it oh was just so nervous i don't know when that's gonna be for me <laughs> <laughs> for me it was just like girlfriend do not trip yeah. on this huge dress and high heels um yeah. no i was i was just like thanking god when i was walking down the aisle because i had my mom and my dad walking with me yeah. And that was uh, that was very special for me because my dad was, like I said, in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. And I remember the only time I ever went to go visit him in jail was right when I got engaged. Nice. And I didn't have really a relationship with him, but I remember talking to him and being like, like, I know you and I, you know, don't really have like a past and stuff. Like we don't know each other very well, but you're here and yeah. I want you to be in my wedding. So please nice. behave <laughs> and I think that was the first time he was like, like, you know, I never really had a serious conversation with him. Yeah. So since then, like, he hasn't been back in jail. And I nice. don't know if it was that conversation that I had with him. Yeah. But I'm so happy that we had it and that he was there for that day. That's awesome. Um, because even though he wasn't, you know, really in my life. I still wanted him to be there. Yeah, he's your he's your father. Yeah, so it was a very special moment walking down the aisle with both of them, and then just being married to your best friend. It's like, damn, we did it. Damn. You know what I mean? We said we we're gonna do it, and Remember we, did we said it. this shit when we started dating in one month. Yeah, and now we're like, yo, we're married with a kid. What the heck? You know, we still feel like kids. That we have that inner child in us. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why, like, we bond so well. Is like, I try to be. I'm, like, I'm going to try to have fun. Like, I'm a Marvel freak. I like Star Wars. Like, we about it. Baby and I'm Yoda. a flaunt it. Baby Yoda. Like, <laughs> you've seen me. I make stupid videos where I'm goofy and it's like. They're so not stupid. I love them. <laughs> look up Paco. Yo, Baby Yoda. Was a Switch challenge? Yeah. That's the my shit. The way you're challenge. just chilling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we just like it. to have fun. And that's what it is. Yeah. Like, listen, I'm going to live my life having fun. And I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to put it out there. And there's. So many people there are like, grow up. But then there's also so many other people there are like, no. because of you, like, yeah. I dress up for Halloween. I dress up like, you know, Captain Marvel or Captain America. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's a girl hitting me up and she's like, I dressed up as Captain America. And before I wouldn't do that, but because I see you dress up as Paco and Iron Man and yeah. this and that, like, you in, you inspired me to just do it. Hell yeah. And I'm like, hey, that's what it's about. Hell yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, like four, four or five Halloweens. My sisters <laughs> dressed me up as a female, the infamous Lucy, and um, they wanted to make me a badder bitch every year. And I was the baddest bitch in the world. There the last go. year, I retired. I ain't gonna lie, she she retired. She's she's in Dubai, like you say. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm telling you. And uh, people, are, of course, goes back to judging and everything. But I know it's like I said, yo, I can wear a fucking dress. I never really wore high heels because I tried. And I, was like, <laughs> I don't know how. You, salute to it's women. A skill. Salute to women. I mean, you guys do the most. I, I definitely appreciate you guys for that. Yeah, I still haven't mastered that one. Yeah. Oh, you haven't mastered. <laughs> I mean, I wear high heels, but I'll be that girl that does not care and will take off my high heels oh, in the parking lot and walk shit. barefoot. Judge Full city me. feet. Full yeah. city feet. Gas station feet. <laughs> I'll feel it. I'll feel it. But yeah, that, that's really, really good. Like I said, you're very inspirational to many people. That's why I have you on this episode. I'm telling you, like, Thank I'm not you. here to kiss ass. I'm just being an honest person, and uh, I definitely appreciate you for being you. And, um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. Like I said, we're going to wrap this up a little bit. But um, last thing, I really want some inspirational words to the youngins that are watching you because you do have a lot of young people that do watch you, even older people that watch you. Uh, what are some, some, what's a quote you can give us? 
<laughs> a quote. Damn, really? Damn, what's a quote? Inspirational, please. <laughs> Shoot, man, putting me on the spot. Yeah. There's so many. It's the I'm best. Just kidding. I'm, I'm like drawing a blank now. If you were talking to the world, the world is watching, the news and everybody. What is something to inspire people? You know what I mean? Yeah, I would just say, like, always remember that your days are numbered. So live mm. your life how you want to live it. That's it. I love that one. Can Mike, I drop this? Drop that shit. <laughs> Fuck it. We're done. No, I definitely appreciate you. Thank you again for taking the time and being on my podcast. Uh, where can everybody follow you? At Radio Suzette. It's the same everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at nice. Radio Suzette. Um, the clothing line, be, be raw clothing com. And yeah, there's more stuff coming with the clothing line. So excited for that. Excited. Me and you are definitely gonna do content. I really want to do. Paco has to come in and skate with me. I don't know. Lucy and Paco might make <laughs> a fucking skit together. I'm telling you. We have you. to. Nah, it'd be dope. And then yeah. also, where can they um, listen to you at the radio on the radio and all that? So um, you can always listen on the iHeartRadio app. So you can just literally listen on your radio. phone. Um, I'm on, you know, 104.7 Kiss FM. That's where the morning show is on. Um, nice. John J and Rich. And yeah, I mean, I. I guess I'll post all the stations that I'm on because I can't even. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll, we'll make sure to post everything. Those. Just let us know all the info so everybody can listen to you and everything. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, that's that voice. Being on the radio, I don't want to say this, but being on the radio, a lot of, do a lot of people like recognize you? Like, oh, shit, you're the girl on the radio. Or is it kind of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends where I'm at. There's some places where I'm like, yeah, I didn't get recognized. That was nice. Nice. But then sometimes it's like, Damn, Damn, I got no makeup on and everyone's coming up to me. Can I get a picture? <laughs> like I, I had my baby and the nurses like came in super excited oh, and I shit. was like, you know, after you have a baby, it's like you look I can imagine. Yeah. So yeah. um but it was nice. It was sweet. They were really kind. Awesome. Well once again, episode three out the way. Once again, appreciate you so much. Y'all better tune in. Remember <laughs> that. What how do they say it? Swipe up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to click the <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, we out. Thank you guys.